Um, so right now we have uh, yeah laws that are, are quite unconstitutional, and uh, the, the courts will, will recognize that, but we don't get high enough in, in, in to the court, Supreme Court of Canada, to, to prove it. Um, so uh, maybe I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the, the medical laws then as well. Although, uh, yeah, um, when the uh, regulations came into effect in 2001, um, the intent was to uh, allow for people to grow and use medicine, um, and the government started up a research project that was supposed to do studies on it, but originally people were given permission to grow themselves and get a designated grower. Um, this has had quite an impact on the, the law. As I said earlier, for a time period in Canada, I think 4,000 possession charges got thrown out because um, the, the whole law was considered unconstitutional. Um, now we have a, a situation where, uh, well, actually I'm going to jump gears to uh, other new laws I just remembered. Um, yeah, there's a, a whole new set of laws that are cropping up that are more bylaws than federal laws. Um, where now we have uh, fire inspectors and police departments uh, that are insisting on having uh, electrical inspections done on these uh, both legal grow ops and otherwise to inspect homes that have got uh, large power supplies. Um, I uh, had a friend of mine recently tell me that their house in Hope had inspectors come because the city was monitoring how much water they were using and because they were using so much water the city wanted to come and do an inspection to ensure, to ensure that there wasn't a grow up. Um, so they're coming up with uh, all sorts of different laws and regulations. I, I saw my friend Kevin earlier who, who was growing uh, <coughs> 40 some odd plants out in Langford last fall, and uh, he got busted. Uh, his uh, doctor told him he'd sign the Health Canada forms, and never did. Uh, or if he ever got in trouble, he'd sign them, and then after he got busted, his doctor wouldn't sign the forms. Kevin got evicted. He, his landlord had to pay thousands of dollars to have the place like cleaned and inspected and all this because of the, the Langford laws, um, bylaws, I should say. Um, and uh, more and more municipalities are looking at creating various bylaws that would essentially punish landlords that would have uh, grow ops in their homes. Um, there was a case in North Vancouver last year where a uh, landlord found in a house that they owned where someone had set up a grow op, so they called the police. The police showed up and uh, um, condemned the house and uh, made them pay uh, for the policing costs for cleaning up the whole place. So they had to pay like tons of money per hour per police officer for it to be dismantled. And then they had to go and get the hazmat team in there to clear out all the mold. With. And uh, yeah, so there's you know almost like this whole new area of law that's developed that hasn't been challenged a lot yet in court, unfortunately. Um, I think after a while enough landlords will have paid for costs that had nothing to do with them that uh, there will be challenges put into court. Um, but uh, there's, yeah, there's this whole movement towards coming after grow ops. There's an article in the Gold Stream Gazette today about them creating a registry for grow ops that were known to them. And so, uh, you know, it's something that uh, um, is in essence forcing landlords to police houses to make sure that they're not renting out to growers, which is just going to add to the costs of renting and the headache of being a landlord. And so um, if these particular groups of laws continue to persist and, you know, if landlords face a fine, if they don't do an inspection every three months, then we're going to find more and more security companies hired to go into people's homes and check out every single closet every couple of months so that the landlords will not be held liable. And that won't stop people from growing because you'll get warning for the inspections just like they're legally required to. And you know, it's something that uh, in, in a lot of cases, people are able to just move the plants out. They have like 
I think I showed it a couple weeks ago, those little uh, grow boxes on wheels, right? So it's like you get a 24 hour notice, you just wheel these out into somebody's truck and somebody comes and does an inspection and you know, there's, there's ways around these things. It's just going to, uh, the, the more it come into effect, it's, it's just going to increase costs in, in our tax base and the cost of cannabis and the only ones that are winning are, are the, the organized crime groups because mom and pop growers uh, you know, step out of this, the more dilemmas that they occur. Um, so yeah, there's a whole new kind of uh, uh, area of law kind of developing around inspections and such. Uh, um, that's uh, yeah, kind of uh, frightening in a lot of ways. And again, shows how prohibition affects far more than the people that are actually you know, using it or, or growing it um, to make landlords pay extraordinary costs for things that they've really done nothing for um, is just another example of the, the stupidity and uh, misguided nature of the laws. Plug for the event tonight? Oh, okay. Um, Tonight uh, at City Hall, I don't have a poster for it. I got this one here for our convention at the end of the month. Dave Bratzer is still allowed to come to our convention in Nanaimo on March 28th. However, tonight at City Hall, is it, is it 7, 7.30? 7. 7 um, the city is hosting an event on... Harm reduction. Um, pardon? Harm reduction. Harm reduction. And Victoria Police Officer David Bratzer, who was on the agenda, has been pulled off it by the police department. So um, you can read about it in Monday Magazine.